What's up guys? Happy Friday. I'm so glad that you're here. I hope you guys had a beautiful week. And if you didn't, I hope that this can be the little escape that you needed because you are my escape. For those of you that are new, my name is Orly. This is the DIY designer. I do really great DIY fashion and home decor. I release videos every Friday and I'm starting to do bonus ones on Sunday. So hopefully you'll stick around for that because they're so good. Today's video, man, is so awesome. I'm really, really excited about it. It's jam packed. It's basically four DIYs in one because today I got a Walmart flip bought a ton of stuff and turned them from sort of like basic to badass. That's it. All of these DIYs require like no money. You're just gonna take the clothes, whatever you're upcycling, all you need are your scissors, some imagination, a little bit of sewing, it's so fun. I mean, this video is really all about saving you money and also BT Dubs giving you money. That's right, today's sponsor is giving away $5,000. thousand of the dollars you guys okay let me get let me get to the point let me explain because you're like shut up and get to the point today's sponsor is shop tagger if you don't know what shop tagger is i'm absolutely in love with it it is an app and also a chrome extension that you can plug in and basically it's clever little technology that will make sure that you never miss a price drop never miss a coupon code, never miss an item when it finally comes back into stock. It is absolutely genius. It's one of my favorite things. It's like a little personal shopping assistant. I always save so much money. Like it'll be either items that are on my regular, like always buy list, like my staples, that as soon as the price drops, I get notified and I just buy a bunch so that I'm getting a better price for it. Or when I've got big ticket items that I really want, but I just like can't justify that price tag. Like right now with Black Friday and Cyber Monday coming up, this is perfect timing. I do not wanna be one of those people sitting there obsessively searching every website and seeing when is there starting, when is there starting, midnight here. Like, I don't wanna do that. So this is how it works. Basically, you either download the app or add the Google Chrome extension or both like I do, and it's gonna be added right into like your toolbar. And it will just sit there minding its own business, basically being your personal shopper in the background. If there's an item that you want, but you wanna wait for it to be a better price, all you have to do is add it to your list. You can add it, say you wanna be notified when it comes down in price. You can also categorize them by different lists so that you have things a little bit more organized. I really want one of those like um, robot vac situations, but they're like three, four hundred dollars. All I have to do is go in, shop on the regular website that I would normally shop on, on the right hand corner because I added the shop tagger extension. I will see a little button. I'll click it. Say, I want to watch this item. I want to know when the price drops. So when Cyber Monday comes or Black Friday comes or just a general random sale comes, I get notified right away and I can buy my robo back on sale, which I'm super excited about. So let's say you're checking out, right? You've already saved money because it's notified you and now you're checking out. When you're using the Google Chrome extension, meaning you're on your desktop, it will automatically scan for relevant coupon codes. It literally scans the entire interwebs and finds all the relevant codes that are active right now so that you can save even more money. And, and they have cash back. They have a cash back option that is insane. If you look at all these stores, all of these stores offer cash back. So even if your item isn't on sale, you're basically getting it on sale because you're gonna get that cash back into a PayPal payment, which you can then use to buy something else on sale. Come on! It's completely free and I have the link down below. Just tap the link and at the end of the video, right before my model sesh, I'm gonna tell you guys how you can win that $5,000 giveaway, which is literally $5,000 to the shop of your choice. It's insanity. Uh, I wanna thank Shop Tagger for sponsoring this and for doing this giveaway. This is so fun and such perfect timing. Okay, let's get right into the DIY. We are going to start with uh, the peplum tea. All right, this is the tee that I got at Walmart. Super cute embroidered tee, but it was about four sizes too big on me and it just didn't really fit right. So I turned it into this absolutely adorable peplum tee. I'm gonna show you how to resize a large tee and turn it into a peplum. So what you wanna do is take your shirt and first try it on. What I did is I put a safety pin where I wanted the peplum to start. Once I knew what that dimension was, I got out my rotary, my ruler, and my cutting mat. Although of course you could just use some fabric scissors if you want. I lined it up making sure that everything was straight so that I could do one swoop right across and cut off the bottom half. Now you wanna make sure to save the bottom because that is what our peplum is gonna be made out of. Now in order for the peplum to actually be larger than the shirt, we need to take in the shirt. So what I'm doing is on the side seam right now, I'm folding it, making sure that my side seams are perfectly flat. And you can see that when I stretch it out, it almost makes like a straight line. So all I need to do is run a stitch across that side on both sides. And however much I'm sewing is how much I'm taking out. So 
Each of these alone is taking out almost five to six inches just on the sides alone. So I'm just doing a simple straight stitch. You could do a zigzag stitch depending on whether there is stretch or of course, if you have an overlock, that's gonna be really simple. It will cut it and stitch it all at the same time. You're gonna do the same thing to both sides, obviously. And that's really where the shirt kind of gave away that it was too big on me, was the underarm area. The sleeve didn't fit right. Now I wanna also take in some space out of the back because again, the neck hole is too big. It sort of falls off my shoulders in a weird way because it was way, way too big on me. So what I'm doing is folding it in half, pinning it so that it doesn't move, and then I'm just gonna stitch it straight down the back. Again, this is probably taking out another three or four inches in the back. So all in all, I'm taking out quite a bit of volume. Now you wanna make sure to try it on first. If it works and it all looks right, now you're gonna cut off your excess. Cut it off everywhere, and once it's good, I'd recommend going over it with a zigzag stitch or an overlock stitch, whatever you have, but make sure it gets nice and clean finished. Now, this is the excess. You can see that's how I took in my shirt, and this is what the shirt originally was. So it's gonna kind of gather in creating my peplum. Now, there's two things. I knew that that was a little bit long. I didn't want my peplum to be quite that long. So what I did is just folded it in half and pinned it so it was straight, and now I'm cutting it, cutting about maybe four inches off. So I'm not cutting it fully in half, but about four inches off, so my total peplum length is around five or six inches long. Now, I also wanted there to be more of a gather than I was gonna get just with that one piece alone. So I went through my like scrap bin of old clothing and found a t-shirt that was kind of a pale pink. It actually tied in really well to one of the embroidered letters on the front. So what I did is I lined it up, I cut the exact same width so that I had two pieces identical, cut both of them open on the side seam so I could attach them together. So now I'm gonna end up with one super, super long piece. Half of it is going to be my original fabric, the other half is going to be this pale pink fabric, which is gonna work really well together. Now, all the way across the top, you wanna do a basting stitch or the widest stitch your sewing machine will allow. Make sure to have a long tail at the beginning and at the end, because once you get there, you're gonna separate the two threads and you're gonna tug on just one of them. You're gonna gather the fabric along one thread, and I'd recommend doing half on one side and then moving over to the other side and doing the other half. Be delicate, because if the thread pops, you have to re-sew the whole thing. Now there's two options for fitting it in. One is just sort of gathering it until visually it looks like it's gonna fit into your shirt. The other is taking a measurement of how large the shirt opening is and then gathering up your fabric until it fits that exact measurement and so it will fit inside perfectly. Once it does, you're gonna sew the two pieces together. Remember, we only sewed them together on one side, so it was one really long strip. Once you're done, you sew the other side together, creating a circle and making sure that it stays the exact length that you want it to. Now make sure your shirt is inside out and then take your peplum. You're gonna keep that right side out and put it inside your shirt. So right now, I know it's hard to kind of understand, but right now my right sides of my fabric are facing each other. So I am pinning them together and when I sew them together, they will both be facing the right side. You wanna make sure to evenly distribute this. So always start off with your side seam to your center seam, back to your side seam, and then evenly distribute all the excess all the way around. That way it feels like it's gonna all be nice and even. And again, you're gonna do the same thing to the front. So just take your time pinning it. You can always go back and redistribute the gathers a little bit like I'm doing here so that it feels like it's really nice and balanced. Once that's done, all you have to do is sew it together. You're gonna sew it with however much of a seam allowance you've been giving everything else. And once that's done, this project is done. Remove all of your pins, flip it inside out, and you're good to go. Can't wait for you guys to see this one in action. All right, so next up, we're taking this blanket. I literally found this sitting like with the Christmas trees and I turned it into this killer blanket cardigan. The leopard print is awesome. You can belt it, you can wrap it, you can wear it like a jacket. And you can see this exact design is available on a ton of websites. This is All Saints. It's $275, you guys, and it's literally the exact same thing. Okay, so let's get started. All you need to do is fold it in half. What you're looking at facing up right now is gonna be the front of our cardigan. And what's laying on the floor is gonna be the back of our cardigan. I like to cheat it just a little bit so that the front isn't quite as long as the back, but that's up to you. You can see why I have that little two inch um, difference there. Now, just to find my center, I folded it in half the other way just so I could see what center was. And I'm gonna cut the center right up the front. This is basically the gist of it. You're just creating an opening that can now drape 
shape over your shoulders like a cardigan. Like so. This is basically it. So what we need to do now is just clean finish the edges, otherwise it will fray from now until eternity. So grab your embroidery floss and a large needle, and we're basically just gonna edge this all the way around. So what you wanna do is start about a half inch down from the bottom. You can see I'm kind of like, I don't know, about a half inch down. You're gonna come in, you're gonna loop all the way around, and before you complete each stitch, you're gonna take the needle and almost backtrack, going through that loop and pulling tight. So go down, don't finish the stitch, go through the loop, and now finish. Go down, don't finish the stitch, go through and pull tight. And basically what it's doing is every time you go through that stitch in the back, it's creating an edging detail right across the edge. So not only are you creating like this one, you know, sort of half inch little stitch, but you're creating an edge detail at the same time. It moves super fast. It's basically a, a simple blanket stitch. You could do it with a contrasting thread if you want, whatever you want to do, but work your way all the way around. And once that's done, this is done. You'll see you can wear it wide open. You can wear it with a belt. You can wear it thrown over your shoulder like a continental soldier. I did it. I really did it. All right, next up. We are gonna take this great cardigan. It's super cute on, but it just has these like cheap buttons that just make the whole thing look bleh. So I grabbed these really cool crystal floral vintage buttons that I had in a bag and I'm swapping them out. Now, this is obviously like such a simple thing. I mean, I don't even know if I can call it a DIY, but sometimes I feel like it's those really simple things that make a piece just instantly look more special and cool. I liked that I bought a really large one. This was a size 12, 14, which is large on me, but it kind of draped and was like low open in the front. And I just thought it had a cool vibe. So I grabbed all the buttons that I thought could work and I kind of took a look at them and I thought, maybe the gold ones would be a little too like preppy. So I decided to use the crystal ones instead. Now, recommendation whenever you're swapping out buttons, if you can do a double thread, it's gonna save a lot of time. So instead of looping it through once, you're gonna grab your thread, cut it so it's nice blunt edge and feed two pieces through the needle. Then when you fold it in half and create your knot, you actually have four pieces of thread. So for every single stitch you do, you've got like four pieces of thread going through and it really saves a lot of time. So first things first, grab either some really sharp scissors or your seam ripper and just remove the old buttons. Make sure you don't pull on them too much because you don't want to distort the shape of the sweater. And now we're just going to sew them in. These buttons are the right size to actually push through the buttonhole, but because of the petals on them, I was afraid it was going to kind of like, I don't know, like shred like the knitting part of it. I don't know. So I actually sewed them like with the, th the sweater closed. You can see I've got my buttonhole and I'm actually going into it, sewing it closed, even though the buttons will still function, I'm never gonna actually open them. So that's a good option if you have buttons that are maybe too large for your actual buttonhole. If it's not something you're not gonna open, don't even worry about it. So we're just gonna loop through and through until it feels tight enough. I'd say two or three passes is plenty. And then once you're done, on the back side, you're gonna knot it off. To knot it off, you're just gonna start to do a stitch, grab a couple of threads on the back side. Don't fully complete the stitch, put your needle through that hole and pull tight. Again, you're gonna grab the same place you started, put your needle, don't finish the stitch, put your needle through it and pull tight. Now you're just gonna trim and do the next one. Again, I know this is such a simple thing, but this is just one of those really simple, swaps that just make things look cool and make them look more expensive. So I figured I would do it. And now I absolutely love the way this sweater looks and I feel like I can wear it to a lot more places than if I kept those plastic buttons. All right, last up, we're gonna take this men's button down that I bought in a 3X and turn it in to this super sassy little utilitarian army dress that I'm obsessed with. First thing that I'm gonna do is remove the pockets. That way I can actually create a new seam, almost like a princess seam, allowing me to take out a lot of that volume. Now, the reason that a, a large shirt like this is great is because it's long. It's long enough to be a dress, but it is too wide. So all I wanna do is take out the volume and not actually get rid of the length. So you're gonna take your seam ripper and just start removing all of the pockets. Obviously every pocket is different, but just take your time. Try to be as careful as possible. I ended up kind of creating holes where this was stitched down super, super tight, but my pockets are gonna get reattached and they'll cover the holes so it's no problem. And it's time to actually create 
our like princess seam for lack of a better word. I marked about four inches in from the neckline and I went down center through the pocket, right? I can see where the pocket is and I'm just eyeballing it. I went from my four inch point straight down through the middle of the pocket and then kind of just slightly sloped out. I'm really just eyeballing this. Once I did this one side, then I used that as measurements to duplicate on my left side. Anytime you do that, you can always eyeball your first side, but just make sure that you use your measuring tape to ensure that the other side will be symmetrical. Basically what this is gonna do is create four new places where I can actually remove volume. Instead of only being able to take volume out of my side seams, now I have two seams in the front and two seams in the back where I can actually remove all of that volume. So right there, I'm able to kind of pinch it out and create a really great shape for myself without getting rid of the length, which is what's going to let me wear it as a dress. Now I've got both of my sleeves laying them face to face and I'm going to cut them at the same time. So whenever you cut something at the same time, you always really want to focus on pinning everything so that it's nice and even so that if you are cutting at the same time, you are cutting it all evenly. Now I knew I wanted to remove about three inches out of the shoulder and then sort of gradually slope down to nothing so that again, I don't get rid of too much of the volume in what is gonna become my skirt. So I lined everything up, grabbed my fabric scissors and started cutting. And you'll see that basically I like start off at whatever that is, maybe two and a half, three inches, and then I just kind of gradually disappear into nothing. And there you go. Now I am going to repin this back to the rest of my shirt. And you can see I put it on a dress form so that I could kind of get a sense of it and I still needed to take more out. So basically all I did was pin them together and I'm gonna sew them with about a one inch seam allowance because I can always go back in and take out more. Now, when you're sewing this, you're most likely gonna need to pull really hard because they're not gonna line up perfectly. Because we've cut some fabric out and left some as is, they're not gonna line up exactly right. So pin your hems and your shoulders and then try to evenly distribute everything else and pull tight, that way it kind of just lines up naturally. You're gonna do all of the sides. So I did, obviously, I started on my shoulder and went down to the front. Then I went back to that shoulder and went down to the back. Then I moved to the other side. Obviously, step and repeat, you're gonna do the same thing for both sides. Now, I also wanted to take advantage of my side seams and get rid of some volume there. So again, I pinned it together so that it was easy and I'm just gonna pinch out that volume. I started on my sleeve at zero, meaning that it's going to start where the existing uh, hem or, or uh, seam, excuse me, is, and it's gonna gradually get bigger. That way you can't really tell where it starts. It's getting its biggest at the underarm, right through the top of the bust, and then you can see it gets small again right as I get to the hem and you double back. Now I tried it on and it all fit me great, so it's time to cut off all of the excess. Again, this is when you would cut off your excess, you would run over it with a serger or a zigzag stitch or an overlock stitch, something just to clean finish all of your edges. But basically the overall fit of our shirt is good. Now take some time pressing it. This is what's gonna make all of those seams start to really come together and feel like it's cohesive and like it's not bubbly and it doesn't look like you made this out of an old men's shirt. It actually looks like a dress. So push all of your seams to one side, then pull tight and push all of your seams to the other. You can flip it back right side out and sew them again if you'd like. You can see my seams look really nice. They're clean pressed, they look good, and now it's time to reattach my pockets. So I'm just gonna take those pockets and line them up. Obviously, I can see where the old stitches were and that's what I need to cover. So I'm just making sure that I'm pinning it so not only are they even right to left, making sure they look symmetrical, but also making sure that the old holes that I created or the old seams that are still sort of visible are being hidden. And I had these really fun epaulets that I bought. They had like a fringe shoulder and I thought they would be so cool for this sort of like utilitarian style um, dress I was gonna make. So I pinned them on and tried it all on. Everything was good and so now it's time to attach it. Again, I'm just doing a simple straight stitch following the existing lines which I can see from the old seams and here we are. Now this is a really cool hack for shortening a sleeve. You're gonna take your sleeve and you're gonna fold it up. Fold it like away from you. This is very similar to what you do when you hem jeans, when you wanna keep that sort of like bubble hem on the bottom. You're gonna fold it up, right? Fold it just like that. Now I'm gonna take a pin and I'm gonna pin it right at, like as close to the edge as I possibly can, right there. And I'm gonna sew all along that edge. Then once I've sewn it, I'll cut off that excess and when I fold the cuff down, ta-da! That will be my new sleeve. 
Obviously, all that excess underneath there is just gonna get cut off. You can see again, I'd fold it down and I've shortened my sleeve in a really simple way. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. Sewing it, obviously, as close to the edge of the cuff as possible without going into it. I want it to look really seamless. So I'm pulling my fabric apart, the way I can get in there on both sides, and now I'm gonna cut off that excess. So you can see when it folds down, it looks really nice, yada yeah. We're almost done, you guys. Now, the last thing I thought I would do is actually cut off the collar, because I thought it might look really cool to have this like, I don't know, it felt more utilitarian, that sort of like Mandarin collar. So I just simply cut it right off, like as close to the edge as I possibly could with my fabric scissors. I ended up taking the old cuff, uh, excuse me, the old collar, and I sew it right onto the back to hide my messed up seams in the back. You wanna get really creative. Anytime you're doing things like this, be creative because you might end up with seams that don't line up perfectly. And instead of freaking out and trying to redo it, just look at your materials and see how you potentially could fix it. So I just sewed it to the back and it ended up being a really cool detail that I love. Now, the last thing was some elastic. This is totally up to you guys if you wanna do it, but if you are gonna do it, you just kinda always work in even sections. So fold your elastic in half to mark your center point, fold Fold that half in half to mark your quarter point. And then you're just gonna do the same thing on your actual dress. You're gonna pin it at the very beginning and at the very end. Then you're gonna find your center and pin it there. Then you're gonna find your quarters and pin it there. And basically that's gonna give you kind of a guide for where everything should stretch out. And then you're just gonna sew it together. Whenever you're sewing elastic, you know the deal. Just make sure that you pull super tight so that the elastic is fully stretched out and the fabric is fully flat. And make sure you're running a nice straight line, a straight stitch or a zigzag stitch. Either will do. I did a straight stitch and it worked perfectly for me. It just gave my dress a little bit more shape and it made my skirt portion feel a little bit more like a skirt. And that's it, guys. We're done. Let's model these bad boys. All right, guys, that's it. I can't wait to model these for you. But before we do that, you know what this is. This is about the $5,000 Shop Tagger giveaway. If you guys want to be eligible, this is what you got to do. You got to download Shop Tagger as an app and as a Google Chrome extension, you gotta do both. Then you need to add at least three items to your saved list. I would add more, cause you're gonna save more money, but hey, whatever floats your boat. But also the more items you save and the more you use ShopTagger across both platforms, it's like multiple entries. So the more activity, the higher the chances are that you're gonna win that $5,000 gift card. Now you have to complete these steps by November 24th. And then on November 25th, if you're the winner, ShopTagger will email you and let you know that you won and allow you to pick which store any store you want a $5,000 gift card to. I recommend Amazon because you can buy everything. A RoboVac, some coffee, glitter, a hat, some high heels, anything you want, Amazon's got it. So that's what I would recommend, but you do what works for you. Good luck, you guys. I hope that you win. And um, let's get to modeling because these came out super cute. You can ride. I wanna do what you want to We can leave and run away Someday Someday
say 